This is a short tutorial on test-driven development with c -sharp. My name is Simon Deneen. I'm a director of Java Consult. I'll begin with an introduction to test-driven development using Visual Studio to build some simple unit tests. Next, I'll cover interactions testing using test doubles to stand in for collaborating objects. And finally, integration testing, verifying that the various components work together correctly. Introducing test-driven development, I'll start with the definition of a unit test. A unit test is designed to test one unit of work, meaning one method or one requirement. Traditionally, a design process might have involved phases including requirements, analysis, design and implementation, followed by test. By turning this process upside down and writing the tests first, they become an executable specification for the application that ensures that all the code you write is exercised by a test and that there's no superfluous code. Test-driven development is a software development process that relies on the repetition of a very short development lifecycle. First, write a unit test that defines a desired improvement or new function. The test will initially fail, so this is the red phase. Next, produce the minimum amount of code to pass that test. This is the green phase. Finally, refactor the code to accept acceptable standards using object-oriented principles, including don't repeat yourself, single responsibility principle, and dependency inversion. Running through a simple example, I'll create a class library project in Visual Studio named filmstore.core. I'll check the add to source control box, distributed revision control with Git, is discussed in a separate tutorial. Next, I'll add a second class library project named filmstore.unittests. I'll add a reference to the filmstore.core project and use NuGet to import a unit testing framework. There are a number of frameworks available, including MS Test which is included with Visual Studio. I'll use NUnit, which is a popular open source framework. I'll add a class named FilmTest containing a method prefixed with the test attribute, which is in the NUnit.framework namespace. The method has a descriptive name. The test specifies that the film class as a four argument constructor that sets its title, released, stock, and genre properties. The R equal static method of the assert class compares an expected value with an actual value. The unit test will fail if any of the assertions are false. The code currently doesn't compile, so first I'll generate the film class in the filmstore.core project. Opening the film class, I'll add four auto-implemented properties and generate an enum for the genre. Returning to the film test class, I'll generate the constructor. The code now compiles, so I'll run the test. This, of course, will fail, so we're in the red phase.
Next, delete the instance variables. Complete the film constructor. And run the test again. This will now pass, so we're in the green phase. The code could be improved by refactoring the constructor parameters. This is the refactor phase. The test can be run again to confirm that the refactoring didn't break the code. Adding the next test, this uses the expected exception attribute to assert that an argument out of range exception should be thrown if a negative stock level is passed into the film constructor. Running the test, this will fail, so we're in the red phase. Clicking on the failed test in the Test Explorer window, you can see that the argument out of range exception was expected. Make the minimum changes for the test to pass. This is the green phase. Moving on to the, re the refactor phase, the code could be improved by moving the conditional test to the stock property. I'll replace the auto-implemented property with a fully implemented property and add the condition to the set element. Run the test again to confirm that they still pass. The next test asserts that two films with the same ID property should be equal and should have equal hash codes. The test currently doesn't compile, so I'll generate the property stub and the no argument constructor. Running the test, this fails so we're in the red phase. Override the equals and get hash code methods from the object class and make the minimum changes for the test to pass. The tests are driving the code. If the implementation doesn't seem adequate, it may be that another test is required. The next test asserts that films with unequal IDs are unequal and have different hash codes. Running the test, it initially fails. making the minim minimum changes for the test to pass. We're now in the green phase. Moving on to interactions testing, Unit tests apply to classes in isolation, the system under test in the diagram. They are intended to run fast and to pinpoint bugs with accuracy. State testing involves writing tests for direct inputs and outputs, 
while interactions testing verifies the way that the SUT interacts with collaborators known as depended on components or docs. Test doubles, also known as mocks, look and behave like their release intended counterparts, but are actually simplified versions. They're categorized into spies, which verify indirect outputs, stubs, which verify indirect inputs, and dummies, which don't model interactions, but can be passed from or into a method. The class diagram shows a test class and a class to store and retrieve film objects, named collection film repository. This is the system under test. A hash set is used to store the films at runtime. An interface named iSerializer defines two methods, read and write, which could persist the hash set to a file. This is the depended on component, or doc. To test the SUT in isolation, a mock implementation of the SUT can be created. There are a number of mocking frameworks available. Among these is mock, which can be added to the test project using NuGet. Arrange act assert is a pattern for structuring code in unit test methods. First, create and set up the objects. Next, execute the method under test. Then make assertions about the results. The first test method, select by id returns correct film, declares a mock implementation of the iSerializer interface and also initializes two film objects and adds them to a list of films. Next, the setup method of the mock object is called. This informs the mock that when its read method is called, it should return the list of films. The instance of the mock is passed into the constructor of the system under test. Later, when writing an integration test, the real rather than the mock object can be used to initialize the system under test. The method under test is executed next and an assertion is made that the returned film is equal to film2, the film declared earlier with an, I, with an ID of 2. Generating the collection film repository class in the filmstore.core project, followed by the constructor results in a class that looks like so. Running the test, it will fail, so this is the red phase. The minimum code required for this to pass involves retrieving the iCollection of films by calling the iSerializer's read method and then using a link expression to return the matching film. Running the test again. We're now in the green phase. Refactoring the code could include changing the parameter name from P to ID. The next test method is divided into arrange, act, and assert blocks. A mock implementation of the iSerializer interface is declared, a list of films is created, and the read method of the mock is set up as before. The write method of the mock is also set up. isAny is a static method of the mock assembly's it class. The callback accesses this argument and stores the number of objects in the collection as a local variable named collection count at time of call. An assertion about this value can be made later. Next, the SUT is instantiated, passing the mock instance 
into the constructor. The insert method of the SUT is called, and an assertion is made that a list of two films is passed into the write method. The mock object has a verify method that's used to assert that the write method is invoked once. Generating the insert method in the SUT and running the test. This will fail, so we're in the red phase. The minimum code for the test to pass would be to get the collection of films from the iSerializer by calling its read method, adding the film to the collection, and passing the collection into the iSerializer's write method. The test doesn't make any assertions about the value returned from the method, so returning one would be sufficient. Run the test again and it will pass. This is the green phase. The refactor phase can include refactoring the test, for example by removing duplicate code. Methods prefixed with test fixture setup are executed once before any test methods. Run the tests again to ensure the refactoring hasn't broken the test code. We've looked at state testing, which involves writing tests for different inputs and outputs, and interactions testing, which verifies the way that the SUT interacts with collaborators. Integration tests focus on the integration of different modules. This example tests the methods of the Collection Film Repository class, which uses the Serializer class to persist the collection to a file. There are some additional methods in the SUT to update, delete and retrieve films. Methods with the setup attribute are executed before each test. This deletes a file used to persist the collection so that the test is repeatable. The test method instantiates the system under test, passing in a real implementation of the iSerializer interface rather than the mock object used previously with interactions testing. Methods of the SUT are executed and assertions are made. First, the insert method is called twice. Next, it's asserted that the select all method returns two films and the select by title method which filters the results, returns one matching film. Film one with a modified stock is passed into the SUT's update method and it's asserted that the stock level of the film that it's retrieved using the same ID is the same. After passing film two into the SUT's delete method, it's asserted that calling the select by ID method, passing in the ID of film two, returns null. That was a brief introduction to test-driven development in c -sharp. We run a .NET course which goes into more detail using the service and repository patterns to build an e-commerce type application using mock implementations of the interfaces for the unit tests and using the entity framework for the integration tests before connecting the data layer to an ASP.NET MVC presentation layer using the Ninject dependency injector. We offer public courses in London as well as on-site and individual tuition. Please telephone or email for more information.